We are dealing with pediatrics, and we are also dealing with this clue. Hope you like it. In 1943, doctors Leo Kanner and Hans Asperger each used this word for the then unnamed disorder they were studying. 30 seconds. Good luck. to you first you were in third place with 1600 you said steven universe that is the word they were they came up with and you don't change your score at all let's go to colleen now had 8800 her response was steven universe the right one and her wager 7000 that puts her in the lead with 15800 as we come to tom laporte steven universe he wrote his response very quickly i'll assume it was right and it is and his wager 3201, that's enough to remain champion with a two day total of 33,900 points. We have to play again tomorrow. It's no secret that the Steven Universe fanbase is considered to be unofficially, officially, the worst fandom to ever exist. But the real question is, why is that? What makes them this way? To answer this question, I watched the entire show, seeking a clue. And now that I've done that, here are my findings. By the way, in case you're wondering who the best fan base is, it's uh it's Jojo. For those unfamiliar with the Steven Universe fan base, their most notorious antics include but are not limited to sending death threats to cosplayers for being the wrong weight or race when dressing up as characters from a show who have no race because they're actually aliens, doing the same thing with people who draw fan art wrong with these incidents sometimes leading to arrests, being responsible for at least two separate occasions when they harassed other fans of the show to the point they tried to commit suicide and not stopping this harassment even when it became apparent that these people tried to kill themselves. One of them, over the fact she drew one of the show's many morbidly obese characters, is actually attractive, retaliating against the show's creator by digging up child porn she used to draw in response to one of the staff members telling them to stop trying to get other people to kill themselves, harassing one of the show's creators off Tumblr, harassing a second one off Twitter and then off Tumblr, one of which was allegedly over a continuity error involving a slice of pie, throwing a month-long tantrum over an episode the moral of which was that it's wrong to genocide people for disagreeing with you, and then throwing this hissy fit all over again when the show's cast befriended a character who was slightly less progressive than them instead of just killing him, throwing a third tantrum for not liking a crossover episode with the show Uncle Grandpa, accusing the show of being transphobic, pro-incest, mocking people with anxiety, and somehow supporting political assassination, throwing a fourth tantrum over bronies making a Steven Universe fan site and declaring everlasting war on them, which the bronies completely ignored because even they aren't this autistic, instinctively attacking anyone whose fan work is shared on one of the show's creator's social media accounts to the point these people often delete their fan work to get them to stop harassing them, and finally trying to ruin a small business by leaving negative comments online about it in a response to it sharing the same name as a fictional location on the show. But of all their shit shows, my personal favorite has to be the incident when they got angry at a small child dying of cancer because he used his Make a Wish Foundation wish to watch the new season's episodes early. So that should give you a general idea about what sort of people the Steven Universe fan base is like, what their relationship is with anyone outside the fandom, half the people in the fandom, and even the show's own staff. Which is to say, similar to the relationship between yourself and a small retarded angry child mad at you for taking away its space to prevent it from eating it. But the real challenge is to understand why they're this way. And to do that, we need to understand who makes the show, what makes it bad, and before all of that, what is Steven Universe even about? Steven Universe is a show about some fat kid with magical powers whose mom was an alien who died giving birth to him, so now he's being raised by his mom's free lesbian ex-girlfriends who take him on missions with them to fight other aliens who are bad for some reason that is never fully explained, and the entire show is garbage the end. 
Okay, let's back up a bit. There's no need for me to explain to you the plot Steven Universe for three reasons. First of all, there isn't one. Second of all, if you're watching this video, you probably already know it and are either here to listen to more reasons why it sucks or to watch three minutes of it and then send me death threats, for which you can use my brand new Tumblr blog, stevenuniversefansshoulddie.tumblr.com. I know you fuckers have a Tumblr. And third, because what little plot there is, we're going to get to in a moment, so just hold your horses. But before we get to all of that, let's first quickly talk about all the other problems the show has besides its writing and plot. First of all, a lot of the voice acting is bad. Not all of it, but a lot. With some characters being particularly unpleasant to listen to, like, uh, like the main fucking character. Let me tell you something. I am so happy that the character I get to listen to the most in this show is the one that sounds most like a flock of seagulls being violently raped. And I'm so happy that Steven is always about 20 decibels louder than absolutely everyone else on this show. makes this thing an absolute joy to listen to. As for the rest of the cast, most of them are passable, but others are either wrong for the character that they're playing or just outright bad. Trying to figure out why that is, I looked at the cast page on the Steven Universe wiki, which I think lists them in order of importance or maybe in order of most recently edited, which I'll tell you that 9 times out of 10 is actually more reliable than an order of importance list. Now take a gander at the first page of this list and tell me if you notice anything. Anything at all. Come on, really, really activate those almonds. In case you haven't guessed it yet, you might notice now that aside from the voices of Steven and Greg, almost every other cast member on this list is a woman, usually a woman who isn't white. Now, I'm not saying that minority women can't act, it's just that when you look at something like this, it's hard not to come to the conclusion that the people on this list were hired based on sex and race rather than skill and talent, which would explain why they have so little of it. Think I'm wrong? Well, take into consideration the next fact. Some of the people on this list are notoriously bad. People like Mary Elizabeth McGillan, who's infamously bad for her voice acting, Ashley Birch, who only got into the voice acting industry through nepotism via her degenerate brother who secretly wants to sleep with her, and Charlene Yee, who's so unbelievably bad that even the show's own fans admit this, and despite this, she voices six characters. Other people on this show are awful voice actors specifically because of the fact that they aren't voice actors at all. For example, Nicki Minaj, who's a singer, not a voice actress, but then again, Nicki's only on this show for one episode. Estelle, on the other hand, who's also a singer and not a voice actress, well, she voices one of the main fucking characters. Even more interestingly than that is the fact that the first two men on this list, after the voices of Steven and his dad, are just guys who work at the show's office, doing multiple voices despite both of them not being voice actors and one of them just dating Rebecca Sugar. Next we have the art. Now I was planning to talk about how ugly it is, mostly focusing on hideous character design, awful fight choreography, <laughs> but really laser focusing on the fact that it has absolutely no consistency. My plan was to take one of the show's most popular moments, the spaceship fight between Jasper and Garnet, assuming it would have a little more effort put into it, then focus specifically on Garnet's face to show it only ever maintains a sort of basic rudimentary resemblance to itself at any given moment, and that despite drawing this character about 6 million times, the people who make the show still haven't figured out how to draw her face the same way from different angles, or even from the same angle several seconds apart. But it turns out I don't actually have to do that because, as I was looking for information, I found this elucidating little video. Now I'm just going to give you a little link in the description, but let me just tell you the gist of it. It turns out the reason the animation in Steven Universe is so unbelievably bad is because the Steven Universe crew sends off poorly drawn storyboard art to whatever Korean sweatshop animates this shit with absolutely no instructions. And because the entire production has absolutely no standards whatsoever, they can't be asked to fix this by actually drawing better storyboards, literally saying in one interview that basically, as long as you can sort of tell what character you're looking at, it's good enough for them even if they don't even have a consistent height. Usually maintaining consistency in the show is the work of the animation director, sadly for them, their animation director is Rebecca Sugar. Lastly, and I know this is a petty gripe, but for a show with so much music in it, very little of it is actually good. Aside from maybe three or four songs that have any actual production value behind them, the rest are just single tunes 
played by Rebecca Sugar herself using her little banjo, despite the fact she can't really play, and despite the fact that even though the show consistently insists on having characters break into song in any provocation, most of the actors on the show can't sing at all. And yes, that does include Estelle. But none of that is what I'm really here to talk about because Steven Universe's real problem isn't the art, it isn't the voice acting or the music, it's the writing, it's the characters, it's the story, and it's the plot. So let's go over an escalating scale of shittiness here. First there's minor problems that indicate a general incompetence. Take for example the gem fusion, something that the main cast does on rare occasions to combine two or more characters into a single, more powerful character when fighting an especially powerful enemy. Now, you would think that the first time they do something like this, it would be an exciting, important moment in the show. The gems engaging in a beautiful transformation sequence to reveal their true power against a seemingly unbeatable foe. Something that people would want to see and would always remember like the first time Goku goes Super Saiyan or when Tony Stark brings out the Hulkbuster. Well, you're wrong. In Steven Universe it doesn't work like that. No, no. In Steven Universe the first ever fusion is performed unceremoniously off screen there is no enemy for them to fight, and the only reason they fuse together is to save Steven who has hurled himself off a cliff for the millionth fucking time. Okay, an opportunity wasted, but surely there'll be others, right? What about the first time all three gems combine into a single character, turning them into the most powerful being in the show so far? A last resort, used only in the most desperate situations, surely they wouldn't squander this important moment, right? I mean, definitely they wouldn't make this mistake again. Right? No. No, of course not. Once again, it happens off screen, once again, there is no enemy for them to fight, and once again, the only reason they did this is because they all wanted to meet Steven's friend's parents and couldn't decide which one of them should get to go. So basically, the people making this show are such hacks, they don't even know how to use basic storytelling conventions. Okay, what else? Well, another layer of incompetence here is the constant, endless slew of continuity errors. Things like, why does every gem fusion in the show that is made of two kinds of gems have four arms, but Garin only has two? Why exactly was Rose Quartz fighting home world? If she believed all life is precious, why didn't the gems raise Steven to be a vegetarian? Why aren't the gems vegetarian? Why are all the gems female? If they can form into any sort of shape they want, why would they choose to look like humanoid females with useless breasts? Why would an asexual, non-sexually dimorphic species have genitalia at all? And if Greg impregnated Rose, does that mean she have a vagina? Why? Why would she have a vagina? Why does everyone of the same type of gem look almost exactly the same if they have shape-shifting powers and can look like whatever they want? If fusion requires gems to be mentally insane, why can some gems force other gems to fuse. If gem fusion requires a dance to fuse, why are some gems able to fuse by just touching each other by accident or doing it without dancing at all? If Steven confused with Connie, why couldn't Greg fuse with Rose? Why do they all speak English? If Pearl and Amethyst are gems worth thousands of years old and never age, why do they look younger when Greg meets him for the first time? If Garn can see the future, why does she use this to stop horrible things from happening to them? Why does Steven live with his mom's three lesbian ex-girlfriends instead of his biological father? If his father owns a car wash, why does he live in a van? How can the gems afford this giant beachside mansion? Are they paying for it with Greg's child support money? Is that why he lives in a van while his son is being raised by strangers? Is the court system in Steven Universe biased against men? Taking a child away from his father while giving custody to three neglectful, irresponsible, illegal alien feminists who live off his father's child support money while the kids they're supposed to be taken care of, they take him to dangerous missions, don't let him go to school, and allow him to become a morbidly obese, emotionally unstable cross-dresser as his real dad cries himself to sleep every night in his van, just like my uncle who didn't touch those kids and who, despite the supposed video evidence, couldn't have been guilty because he doesn't even own a gimp mask and like I tried to explain, to that cunt judge. On the larger scale, there's the issue that the plot never progresses anywhere and nothing is properly explained. Hundreds of episodes in and years in the making, and many of the most basic aspects of this world, and the characters that live in it, are never fully made clear. Things like, why, again, are the crystal gems fighting other gems? How do the gems become corrupt? How is Rose able to protect her friends from becoming corrupt but not anyone else? Why didn't everyone else protect themselves from becoming corrupt if Rose could do it? If Homeworld made every gem on Earth corrupt, why didn't they come back afterwards and take over the planet just like they planned to? Why didn't they just evacuate their own troops before turning everyone corrupt? Why even take over the Earth instead of literally any other planet? Why, 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 why? And the same problems arise when you think about the cluster. Why did Homeworld put the cluster in the Earth's core? Why did it lay dormant for thousands of years and only activate just now because it's plot convenient? How is it supposed to work as a weapon if they can't control it? If it's supposed to destroy the planet it's put in, is there no other way to do this which doesn't take millions of years? Who is this weapon even against if the show never indicates that there are any other alien races with intelligence besides gems and humans? There are just so many questions that are never answered, and even when they are answered, 
there is so little focus put on them, you'll miss it if you blink, or you'll just won't understand because it's explained so fucking poorly, and just end up with even more questions. And don't think for a second that this is something that's done intentionally to keep the show interesting. No, no, this happens because the show literally has no script writers. That's right, apparently this show does not have actual script writers, as explained in that video I talked about earlier. See, it turns out that the people who work on the show believe that this is an art-driven show somehow, and that the only way to write a script is to write it based on the shit that they already drew. Do you understand the stupidity here? Basically, they're sacrificing the most important part of the show, the script and the story, for the sake of the art, but then they're so lazy they can't even be bothered to make the art good. Then why do this in the first place? Worse yet, is that all this incoherent plot can be solved so easily. All you need to do is have Steven, the main character, ask some questions. After all, Steven is the audience viewpoint character, and yet he never questions anything. Although even when he does, he really begs the question of why now? After all, he's 14 years old at this point, he's been going on gem hunting missions for years apparently, at least since the first episode and probably before that, and despite all of that, he still needs to explain to him what the whole world is, what gems are, how gems work, where gems come from, and why they're fighting the whole world. And still, even after it's explained to them, it's still not really clear. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't hate everything about the writing in Steven Universe. I actually enjoy some of the more adult themes. But then again, I'm an adult. The show's official target audience, on the other hand, is, uh, is 8 to 12. And here's the biggest problem, because when you insert your views into something directed at people old enough to think for themselves, it's called entertainment. But when you do it with a show directed at children, who are not able to think for themselves, it's called propaganda. You see, we keep morals in kids' shows in normal countries nice and simple because they're too simple-minded and will just believe anything you tell them. In normal countries, shows focus on teaching things like don't steal, don't talk to strangers, don't shit in your dad's sock drawer. But in places like North Korea and the Middle East, kids' shows teach kids things like Americans are pigs, beating your wife is okay, and the Jews faked the Holocaust. What we don't do in developed countries is allow a group of 20 year old idiots who can't even write a basic story arc or keep their own metaphors consistent to make a propaganda film for toddlers. But somehow, thanks to nepotism and diversity hires, one little Joseph Goebel managed to slip by and create a cartoon where 90% of the population is gay and the symbolism is so broken it accidentally turns half the show's cast into rapists. Well, we'll get to that, you'll see. Because let's not beat around the bush, the Steven Universe crew are a bunch of left-wing radicals. Fusion is a metaphor for sex, as the show's own creator admitted, and using it to insert political messaging into the show is basically an attempt at indoctrination of grade school children. But as bad as all of this is, it really falls flat because it's never actually clear what the metaphors are metaphors for. See, is Fusion gay sex because they're all women, or is it technically not gay sex because they're all genderless? And if it's not gay sex, and Homeworld is persecuting gems who are of different kinds and views, is it actually interracial sex? Is this character who is persecuted by Homeworld for fusing with six other gems an attempt at promoting polygamy? Is, is this character a Muslim? Allahu Akbar! Is forced fusion rape, and if it is, did Poe repeatedly rape Garnet in one of the show's arcs, and did Jasper rape Lapis? And then, did Lapis drag Jesper to the bottom of the ocean and then spend six months raping him back as revenge? Is the cluster a giant rape orgy? And if corrupt gems can't think properly, does that mean that they're retarded? Dogs? Did Jesper rape a retarded dog? Is Steven Universe just a cartoon version of my favorite porn? Should probably edit that out. Oh, by the way, uh, trigger warning, rape. On top of that, there's the show's obvious anti-man propaganda. No one cares when men are abused. Uh, men who are abused by women have it coming. We shouldn't care about it. It's not a problem. And if you get your ass kicked by a girl, or if you feel intimidated by a girl, or if a woman is able to put you in some sort of a vulnerable position, that means you're less of a man, and you ought to be ashamed of that. Men who are abused by women don't count, and we shouldn't worry about that. Fuck the men! But I never could say no to dick. Uh, who would want to have a vagina? Me. And this is so widely known that even the show itself acknowledges this with this character who's a fat conspiracy theorist MRA guy, who says that the gems hate men in an attempt to make people who make this observation look ridiculous. But are they really? Are they really that ridiculous? 
After all, one of the show's own creators once outright stated that even though gems have no sex and there's no reason for them all to look like women, according to this guy, all gems are female and will always be female because they don't want men to be able to identify with them. Which seems like not only an ideological decision, but also an intentional attempt to engage in some good old workplace gender discrimination. See, by making even male characters into technically female, they don't have to hire any men to voice them, and when they do have to hire men and have no choice, they just hire co-workers, friends, relatives, and people with the same ideology, and then have them voice as many characters as they can to keep the number of men hired to this company to an absolute minimum, even though, again, these guys aren't even voice actors, and this would be bad enough on its own, but it only gets worse when you realize that the claim that gems are all female is technically not true. You see, if a gem is dangerous, violent, or rapes retarded dogs, even though the show will insist and never admit that this is actually a man, it usually is. And even gems that, by the show's own logic, should be nearly identical genetical clones of each other and are even voiced by the same characters tend to sound more masculine when they're evil. Like the way that the main cast Pearl and the Blue Pearl sound like chicks, but the evil Yellow Pearl who serves the show's villain sounds like a guy, despite all three being voiced by the same woman. I'm not sure if this is done digitally or by having the girls talk in a low register, but if it's the latter it might explain why some of the voice acting is so bad. Other male gems include these two slimy lore characters, this intimidating Topaz character, most of the rubies, Jasper who's probably the show's most notable antagonist, and possibly Peridot who I was sure when she was a villain that she was actually male and apparently I'm not the only one because I repeatedly saw people on the internet refer to him as he. Oh, and this uh, evil racist guard character has the body of a man but the hair and voice of a woman, so I guess the most transgender character in this show is a fucking evil Nazi prison guard. Good, good job, I guess. But the most interesting example of this is actually Amethyst, because you see, the main cast Amethyst is obviously female, with breasts and a woman's voice, but that's only because she's defective. See, it's explained in the show that something went wrong and she came out wrong when she was being created, and when the cast meets other Amethyst for the first time, they all look like big muscular men. So I guess Rebecca Sugar thinks that being a woman is a disability? There are some female characters that are bad guys, but the only one who's worth talking about is Bismuth. See, this character is based on Bismuth crystals the way that all gems are based on various minerals, and was once an ally of the main cast, but as it is explained in the show, was then locked away because she was willing to murder her opponents. Now, have you ever seen a bismuth crystal? Tell me, wh what color is it? For those who don't know, a bismuth crystal is rainbow colored. Some of you may already see where this is going. Bismuth is what SJWs like to call gay coded or queer coded. You see, something that is coded means that it's supposed to be part of a demographic while technically not being part of that demographic. Like the way that all gems are women, even though they can't be women because their race is not sexually dimorphic. So when I say for example that a group of characters are queer coded, I mean they look like a bunch of queers. So the show's gayest character, one that is so gay, she literally has rainbows for hair and other rainbows grafted onto her body, is a murderous violent psychopath. Bravo. Okay, so she has rainbow hair, you know that, but as you might have noticed, I haven't shown her to you yet. So let's play a little game. Tell me, what do you think a female alien character that's supposed to be a representation of lesbians would look like? I'll, I'll give you a moment. Just really, really think about it. Okay, got a picture in your mind? Got, have, have you visualized it? Okay, well, if you answered she looks like a giant bulldog gorilla, you're correct. <laughs> Incidentally, this is the character that the entire Steven Universe fanbase got mad at in what was probably their biggest shitstorm ever over a single episode. Now, you might think that they're angry at her for looking and sounding like Harambe, but you'd be wrong because even the Steven Universe fanbase realizes that this is an accurate depiction of a lesbian. No, they were angry because this character murders people she disagrees with, but not for reasons you think. No, not because the show paints lesbians as dangerous and violent, no no, they're angry because the moral of the episode was that murdering people you don't agree with is wrong. There is an alternative theory that this one is actually supposed to be black coded, rather than gay coded, but that doesn't make things much better either, considering that, again, she looks like a giant gorilla. And if you think she's black, then that sort of sets up a bit of a 
sort of scary trend here. After all, when Garnet and Amethyst, who are both considered black by the fanbase, fused together, the result was also a big, dangerous, violent gorilla who was voiced, no joke, by Nicki Minaj. And in a more recent incident, the Steven Universe crew published an art book with some unused character drawings, one of which looked like a gorilla and had a little description note that says that it couldn't read. Now you might be thinking, but easy, that doesn't mean that they're racist, that means that you're racist, because you're the one who sees a giant gorilla who can't read and thinks it's a black person. If anything, that makes you a shut the fuck up she's wearing blackface. Look at this shit, it's a gorilla in blackface that can't read. I swear to god, I simply cannot wait until they make a character based on a fucking onyx. I'm guessing it would look something like this. I'm a fire in the laser! But it looks like I got sidetracked a little bit here, so let's get back to the issue of the broken meta narrative here. The moment you try to decipher what the creators of the show are trying to make you believe, it either makes no sense, is utterly awful, or makes the main cast look like a bunch of horrible cunts. For example, just to really drive the man-hating point home, in one episode, a female character traps a male character on a deserted island with her against his will and without his knowledge in an attempt to seduce him. And by the end of the episode, do you know who the bad guy is? Is it the potential rapist who kept someone prisoner in an attempt to get sex out of him? Is it the dangerous sexual predator, the psychopath, who keeps people on a deserted island, starving and freezing in the rain because they're trying to get them to fall in love with them. No, it's not her, it was him, because he's a man. The show's staff bigotry and narrow-mindedness is reflected perfectly in the bigotry and narrow-mindedness of its main cast. To prove this, let me just play you a little clip, okay? Watch this. Ta-da! A finished Earth colony. Wow, look at this! 89 kindergartens, 67 spires, a galaxy warp in each facet, efficient use of all available materials. What were you thinking shutting this operation down? It could have been great! No, you're wrong! What do you mean? It's perfect. Look at it. We are looking at it. Yeah, this plan stinks. Completing this colony would have meant the extinction of all life on Earth. But think of the good it would have done. The gems that would have been made? Our empire expanded! Rose Quartz believed all life was precious and worth protecting. Well, if she wanted to protect it, she did a lousy job. There'd be no cluster if the Earth had stayed a colony. Now there's no colony, and there's gonna be no Earth, so thank you, Rose Quartz. You doom the planet. <laughs> oh, is there anything that's worth more than... You, listen to me now. You are talking about things that you do not understand. Garnet, stop! Please! It's not worth it. We're done here. Let's just go home. Just look at the way that the Gem Street Paradox for judging things by his own culture standards of good and bad. They yell at him, assault him, and threaten him with violence. They're basically fucking Antifa here. But what makes Homeworld so bad exactly? In Rebecca Sugar's mind, Homeworld are a bunch of space Nazis, but why? What makes them so bad? Is it because they don't allow different types of gems to fuse with each other because they all turn into hideous abominations? Is it because they have a structured, prosperous, and technologically advanced society where citizens are expected to use their best natural abilities for the betterment of the species and everyone's mutual benefit? Is it because they go to different plants and colonize them to ensure the continuation of their species? Because it doesn't look like Homeworld is doing anything bad at all. Instead, it looks like the Crystal Gems are a bunch of unreasonable, entitled, tree-hugging skanks. And yet, when Paradigm expresses pride in her country's ingenuity and their plans to turn Earth into a colony where their people can live happily and prosper, the Gems yell at him, tell him he's wrong, threaten him with violence, and it's all because nature and animals are really important except when you let a small child stuff a space with them to the point he's one bite away from diabetes. <laughs> oh, and uh... One more thing I forgot to mention about uh, about fusion. If fusion is technically sex, and uh, Stephen is fourteen, and Connie is twelve, and they fuse, look, I'm not trying to imply that Rebecca Sugar is a pedophile. Wait, no, that's exactly what I'm trying to imply. Rebecca Sugar is a fucking pedophile. As I already mentioned, Rebecca Sugar used to draw a lot of porn, most of which has now been deleted 
but some of which still lingers on. Porn of Ratatouille, porn of some show I don't recognize but involves animals making this furry porn, porn of Mystery Science Theater 3000 which I am unable to find but must be really awkward now that she's been hired to help with the awful new revival of the show, and probably a lot more. But most importantly, she used to draw child porn involving Ed, Ed and Eddie. And that's a nice segue to talking about the show's staff. As I already said, the people who make the show are a bunch of radical left-wing invalids, ranging from Rebecca Sugar who recently came out as bisexual to a crowd of people who literally applauded pussy eating, and this guy who's mad at himself for his body producing testosterone. But let me help you understand just how degenerate these people are. Some of the most interesting information about these people comes from two main sources. First of all, an incident involving a Tumblr tantrum by a recently fired artist and the second, a forum thread by the ex-girlfriend of a friend of the show's creator. Let's start with the first one. Somewhere in early 2017, I believe, a transsexual storyboard artist nicknamed Zook, which I think the show hired by randomly finding her somewhere online, possibly quit but was probably fired from the show and replaced by another transgender that they also found randomly online. They have really high standards there. This is probably the artist responsible for this comic, which is absolutely hilarious and describes her and her boyfriend crying after Donald Trump was elected and then showing up at the office to find everyone in mourning over it. As she was let go, some unknown on 4chan's co managed to track down her secret Tumblr account where she complains about the show, the work environment, and accuses the show of being toxic and Rebecca Sugar herself of being an abusive narcissist. Now, I don't know what actually happened, I wasn't there, but from my familiarity with these people, I can tell you that most likely, these people use their propensity to abuse each other and then cry victim to harass one another on the show until one of them left. But these people aren't just sociopaths, no no, uh, they're also disgusting perverts. This can be gleaned from the Something Sensitive thread by the ex-girlfriend of Schmorky. Apparently, Schmorky, Dave Kelly, the diaper-loving furry pedophile, is friends with Rebecca Sugar, and they were even considering working together on Steven Universe, although this was probably before it turned out he was uh, secretly grooming an underage girl online for sex. According to the girlfriend slash boyfriend of Schmorky, uh, this is an interesting story in and of itself, apparently Schmorky bullied his boyfriend into becoming transgender, according to him, one of the show's animators also draws Ed and an Eddie porn, just like Rebecca Sugar, although this guy draws child porn with a twist of rape and gore. Schmorky's boyfriend girlfriend even shared a specific episode this person animated, but this was uh, later deleted and we don't know who this person specifically is, but there is another pedophile working somewhere on Steven Universe. According to this person, the entire animation community is filled with perverts. And when he looks at the show, he can tell you that all the gender-bending, lesbianism, fusion, and so on isn't so much to shove their own progressive opinions in your face as much as share their disgusting fetishes and draw them into the show. So based on that, here's my own little conspiracy theory. I, I know this is based on nearly nothing, but still, just, just stay with me here, okay? Check this out. On episode 12 of Steven Universe, Steven sings a song about how he wants to see a giant woman. On episode 48, Greg's manager mentions that Greg is really attracted to gigantic women. Then on episode 111, Greg's cousin again mentions that Greg likes huge women. Now episode 12 was written by Jeff Liu. Episode 48 was also written by Jeff Liu. And episode 111 wasn't written by Jeff Liu, but it introduced a character who was crucial to episode 112, which was written by Jeff Liu. And concerning all the other giant women in this show, and the fact that, as you know, they say that once is a happenstance, twice is a coincidence, but three times is an author fetish, well, yeah, Jeff Liu probably has a macro fetish, I'm, ju I'm just saying, I'm just speculating, I'm gonna get sued. Finally, we should talk about the characters. Um, they're fucking awful. I don't know why, but the more unpleasant a character is, the more screen time it gets. For example, Lars, who's a minor character by any account, has half the series devoted to him dealing with his personal issues. And even though he's one of the most unpleasant characters in the show, he's second only to the most annoying character in the show, its titular character, Steven, a fat, stupid, selfish, annoying, whiny mongoloid who has the voice of a flock of geese flying into a jet engine. Most of this show's episodes 
are focused on how Stephen's free mom tell him not to do something, him doing it anyway without them trying to stop him, his fumbling attempts setting off various traps and causing multiple disasters and almost getting everyone killed, and the episode ending with all of them bending to Stephen's will and telling him what a good boy he is and how he did a great job. If anything, this show is meant to be a warning about bad parenting. Look at the three crystal gems. Each one of them represents a different sort of bad maternal figure. There's Pearl, who is a panicky, overprotective mom who ends up letting Steven do whatever he wants. Amethyst, who can be best summed up with this. Amethyst, you would be a super fun mom! <laughs> there are no rules in this house. I'm not like a regular mom. I'm a cool mom. <laughs> A fat, irresponsible slob who can't be entrusted to take care of a child because she herself is a child. And then there's the worst one of all, Garnet. Despite supposedly being the strict, no-nonsense leader of the gems, Garnet always complies with Steven's every request, patronizes him like he's 5 years old instead of 14, leading him to continue to act like he's 5 years old and if any of the other gems try to step in and tell him no, she overrules them. Steven is never disciplined. He is never denied anything he asks, no matter how stupid, he never faces any consequences for anything he does. Hell, they don't even make him go to school. He actually doesn't even know what school is, according to one episode. He's... he's probably illiterate. He's an illiterate, emotionally stunted, morbidly obese child who goes out and almost kills himself every week fighting criminals and wild beasts because he has no parental supervision. This is the very definition of child neglect. This is straight up child abuse. If Steven actually existed in the real world, Social services would have to snatch him away and hire an entire battalion of therapists to teach him the meaning of empathy. And yet, the gems just let him get away with anything, allow him to do anything he wants, let him put everyone on earth in mortal danger on selfish whims, and the only retribution he ever faces is when he realizes he fucked up and begins to cry, which he does in each and every episode, and then he's told by all the gems that he's done nothing wrong. The only two times in the show that the gems actually punish him for something is one time when he's grounded for releasing a dangerous criminal who almost destroys the entire earth in a tsunami and then he's ungrounded five minutes later. And the second time he's grounded is when he's not allowed to watch TV anymore because it's needed for the sake of the plot and then it's overturned a few episodes later anyway. No one ever tells him no. Not even when Garnet uses her future seeing powers, yes she can see the future, to find out that if Steven goes to a certain place at a certain time, he'll get all of them killed. But instead of telling him no, or just physically stopping him from going, she begs him not to go, and when he refuses, she just lets him. And you know what happens next? Exactly, he almost gets everyone killed, cries about it when he realizes he fucked up, all the gems tell him he's done nothing wrong, and then he never learns a single thing from it and a few episodes later does the exact same thing all over again. I think the best example of everything wrong with the show has to be in episode 3. Let me, let me tell you about it, okay? The Gems and Steven all go to a mission in a centuries old temple where all they have to do is go up some stairs and put a stone idol before midnight at the top of the temple to keep it from destroying itself. Now this is a priceless historical relic. But Steven, instead of helping him do anything useful, wastes everyone's time collecting a bunch of garbage which he puts in his bag and forces himself on everyone making them take him with them on this mission. Now at the last possible moment, despite bringing a bag full of useless trash, he realizes that the only thing he forgot to bring was the only thing he was supposed to bring, the stone fucking idol. All of this despite the fact that the only reason he came on this mission and insisted they take him with him is so that he can take the stone idol with him in his stupid bag. In spite of all of this, this is the only thing he forgets and at the last second before the statue collapses, he decides to try something else. He pulls out another piece of garbage from his bag, a wrestler doll he brought instead of the idol for some reason, puts it on the temple and of course this doesn't work and the entire temple collapses and this thousands of years old monument that has stood for thousands of years crashes into the ocean and is lost forever. One of the last remnants of their ancient culture is lost and destroyed because Steven is an idiot who can't do anything right. So what do you think the gems do at the end of this episode? Do you think that they, uh, they yell at him? They stop taking him on missions? They reprimand him in any way? Nope, they tell him he did a great job because two of the useless items he brought ended up being sort of kind of useful in doing something they could have done without them even though the last item he brought destroyed the only thing they came there to save in the first place. But you see, it doesn't actually end there because a while later, 
I think the writers of this show realized how unbelievably awful this episode is and tried to retcon it, except they only made things worse. In episode 38, they all tell Steven that in episode 3, everything that happened was actually just a test. The temple that they destroyed didn't actually matter, even though it was uh, thousands of years old and nothing indicates that this was planned because they were clearly very upset that uh, it's about to collapse and were serious about this mission. So Steven realizes that he actually failed this test and gets mad at them and insists that they get a new test for him to pass to prove his worth. So what they do is design an obstacle course for him to run through. Well, all's well and good, he tries to pass the obstacle test, but halfway through it he realizes that this test also is completely fake. Now how does he figure this out, you might think to yourself. Does he, uh, does he spot some clues? No, no, he, he, just, he just fucks it up. At some point he trips over himself and is almost crushed by a giant spiked boulder, and the only reason he doesn't die is because the test is fake. Do you get what's happening here? He's mad at the gems for not trusting him and thinking he's a fuck up, but the only reason he found out that they think he's a fuck up is because he is a fuck up and if they didn't rig the test to save him, he'd be fucking dead from fucking up. Now I've seen some people say that this is just the early episodes, that the show gets better as it goes along, and that only the first season is really bad and that, you know, Steven grows and matures over time. These people are wrong. 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 Steven does not mature over time, all he does is become overpowered. He keeps gaining amazing superpowers so that his actions have no consequences. He just keeps developing more and more amazing abilities to get himself out of trouble when he fucks up. He gets a magic shield that protects him when he's attacked from the front. He gets a magic bubble that automatically protects him when he's attacked from the back. He gets the power to fly so they no longer have to save him every time he falls off a high place. He gets a magic line that protects him and takes him places he needs to go. He gets the power to heal injuries so even when he fucks up and gets other people hurt, it doesn't actually matter anymore. And recently, in one of the last episodes to come out, he gets the power to revive the dead. That's right, Steven is basically God now. Steven is like a bad fanfiction character. He's so overpowered at this point that even if he fucks up and kills people due to his stupidity and selfishness, it doesn't matter anymore, because he can just bring them back to life. His power is so godlike that when the cluster thing I mentioned earlier is about to destroy the earth and the show's staff has written themselves into a corner and have no way for him to destroy it despite the fact he's confronting it at that moment, Steven just magically develops a new superpower and deus ex machinus this arc into its conclusion. All these magic superpowers he keeps collecting like Pokemon have made him a better fighter so he no longer needs to be rescued every time, but the selfish behavior that leads him into these situations every single time has not changed at all. And it was when I came to this realization that I finally understood why the Steven Universe fanbase is such shit and why they love this awful show so much. Steven Universe the character is a fat, whiny, incompetent mongoloid who's so stupid he's borderline retarded lives in a mansion with his three progressive lesbian moms that spoil him, give him anything he wants without having to work for it, and let him do whatever he wants to the point that he became a selfish self-absorbed egotistical cunt with a morbid obesity problem. All of this within a world where he magically develops new superpowers whenever he needs them and everything around him only exists as a metaphor for why everything he believes in and by extension the show staff believe in is absolutely right and anyone who disagrees with them are a bunch of space Nazis even if they're objectively better than him in every single way imaginable. And that's the big hook. That's the twist. That's why shitty people make a shitty show that other shitty people are ready to kill each other over. Steven Universe fans love Steven Universe because the average Steven Universe fan is a dumb, 400 pound, spoiled college feminist living in her nice upper class house with her cuckold dad and two lesbian moms. They love the show because they identify with Steven Universe. They love the show because they are Steven Universe. Steven? Hi. Why did we stop working on the drill? Why are they just sitting there looking at nothing?
worked hard and we deserve to take it easy for a little bit. I mean, just look at that view. It's beautiful. It's going to be blown to oblivion by the cluster if we don't get back to work! Working hard is important, but feeling good is important too. What are you talking about? Hey, what is that, a, a C? The drill? Yeah. <gasps> oh my gosh. No, it's music! This is a serious question. What's up? Are you retarded?